What's up YouTube, it's Milma here with another Xcode tutorial. In this Xcode tutorial I'm going to be going over Xcode 4. Um, and I know Xcode 4 has been out for a while now, but I only got it three days ago because I've had to renew all my contracts with Apple, so that's taken a bit of time. Um, so when I first opened Xcode, uh, I got this view here, which is called the Organizer. Now some people might get a different view, which I think is uh, this view. Um, and that is just the same as old Xcode 3. Uh, you know, it's got all your recently opened projects. But the one I had was called the Organizer, and to get that you go to Window and then Organizer. Uh, now this was in Xcode 3, but again, it doesn't automatically open like this, and it didn't ever look like this before. Um, so it's completely new. Again, it tells you all your recently opened projects down the side here. Um, it's got your devices over there, it's got your repositories, your projects, your archives, and the documentation. Now the documentation was in Xcode 3, and it was under help, and as you can see it says documentation and API reference there. Um, but it doesn't automatically come with Xcode, it will ask you if you want to install it when you install Xcode 4. And I recommend you do because it basically takes you to the Apple developer site and you can go search all the code snippets and downloads you can have. So I recommend you down um yeah, I recommend you install it. The reason why I'm not clicking on it to show you is because my computer's going really slow. Uh, I've already done two tutorials on this and they've all been corrupted because my computer's just playing up today. Um so I'm not gonna click on that because I'll be waiting for years for it to load. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the new Xcode 4 opening screen. Um, and you can open Xcode 3 projects in Xcode 4 and they will work perfectly fine. Um, so to make a new project, just go to File, New Project. And it will open the new Xcode workspace here, you can see. Um, and it will have this new screen. Now, it looks the same, but if I just select View Based Application, you can see it goes to a new screen. Now the product name is going to be the name of your app, so I'm going to call mine test app. And then this company identifier is basically your bundle identifier. And uh, I did another video on uploading an app, and that explains what the bundle identifier is. Um, and it's needed when you upload an app to the App Store. And uh, if I just delete this, you can see down here where it says bundle identifier, it kind of gives you a hint of what you're supposed to type in, or what it wants you to type in. And it says com dot your company dot the name of the app. So I'm going to put com dot my company, which is going to be Milmer's Xcode for now. Normally it will be fail cake, but uh, for tutorial purposes, I'm going to do that. Device family is basically what device you want. I'm going to do iPhone. And this check mark box, I don't have a clue what it does, so I'm going to keep it ticked because I don't want it to uh, ruin anything. And, uh, Click sorry, next, it'll really tell you want, there, where you want to save it. it. You just want to really slow it. It took about a minute to load okay. this. Um, so, yeah, here you go. This is the new Xcode screen, and this is what you should get when you uh, open it. And if you have a look here down the side, it's got all the files like there was before in Xcode 3. Um, but you'll notice that some of the things are missing, and one of those things is the resources folder. Now the reason why we don't need the resources folder anymore is because X, I mean Interface Builder is now built in to Xcode 4. Um, so you don't need a resources folder to hold all your .nibs, and as you can see all the .nibs are downside here. And I'll be talking about them in a minute, and the, basically what I want to do in this tutorial is kind of teach you how to get into coding and how to get into the Interface Builder. That is the main purpose of this tutorial. I'm not going to teach you all the kind of fancy stuff that it can do, um, although I will be adding some small bits like the new split screen, the new um, new view tabs and all stuff like that, but I'll get to that when I get to that. Um, so this thing here, this new screen, is uh, kind of like a summary of your app. So as you can see here, I've got my bundle identifier, I've got my version, I've got the devices which I can change, to iPad or both. The deployment target is the iOS that you've got, so if I want to put it on 3.0 iOS I can do that, but I want it 4.3 because I want everyone with the highest updated iOS to have my app. The main interface is kind of self-explanatory, it's the main window that's going to appear. At the moment I only have two, dot, two nib files, so I've got the main window and the test app nib files, so I'm just going to leave it in main window. Um, the supported device orientations is also kind of self-explanatory, but it's also new. 
because Apple are quite big on having everything rotating and stuff and they like, because for the iPad, for instance, it can go in any orientation. So when it's faded out black like this, it means your app can rotate in those directions. If you just want your app just to be portrait, just uncheck them. If you want it to be everything, check upside down. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now you don't really need to code much to get everything to flip. Just need to make sure that it looks nice when it flips. Um, app icons, again, is self-explanatory. And launch images is basically the splash screen that will launch. Um, so there are more tabs up here like info, build setting, build phases, and build rules. I don't really know what any of them do, so I won't be going over them. Now I'm going to kind of go over these buttons at the top here. Most of them are the same. So you've got your run button here. You've got your stop button and that's like build and run. You've got the which simulators you want to build on. So I, at the moment it's on my iPod, but I'm going to change it to the iPhone simulator. This new kind of screen here is basically what Xcode is doing. So if you're building something, it will have like a kind of loading bar that will load when it's building. These over here are the different views. You can have your editor in so you can select that and you can see it now changes view. Um, I'm going to go back to the one single view. These here are kind of different things that can pop up at the side. So as you can see, if I uncheck this first box, the files from the side disappear. If I check this box, uh, a new window at the bottom appears and you can search. It's kind of like a find. Um, and then if I select this one, a new view appears to the side here. And this one has kind of... Um, kind of information about your apps like identity and stuff and it also has your stuff for interface builder in here um, so yeah I'll be going over that in a minute now I want to go into the coding so if we're going to the dot h here I can start typing ib outlet and as you can see it auto completes and asks me which one I want I want an outlet so I'm going to type that I can type in ui label here and uh, I can also give it a name so it's going to be label like that and I save, and if I go into the .m here, go down to the view did load, and uncomment that, and we can put stuff in here, so I'm going to go label, but I'm going to purposefully spell it wrong by putting extra e in it, and I'm going to put .text, and it will also ask me that as well, so as you can see it's kind of guessing what I want to put in, and uh, it's quite accurate most of the time. Now if I forget a semicolon off the end of that, it's going to give me a warning, I mean an error. And as you can see, it's given me the error before I've even built. So it's kind of self-checking. Um, so if I click on that, it goes, you've forgotten a semicolon. Now before, it would just go, I don't know what you're talking about, what's wrong? And I would have to work out what I've done wrong myself. But now, it's automatically guessed and said, look, you've forgotten a semicolon. So I'm like, oh yeah, so I did. Semicolon, error fixed. Next error. Oh, I spelt label wrong. Sorry, I will spell it right again. Uh, I mean, I'll spell it right this time. Oops, in the wrong place. So now I can spell it right. And uh, as you can see, everything's now fixed. No issues, no errors. And it got those errors before I even built. So I think that's pretty good. So now I want to show you something quickly called the code snippet tool. Now, uh, if we open this view here that pops out to this side on the right, and we uh, just expand this small window down the bottom here, and we click on this button here that looks like two curly brackets. Uh, and in here it's basically got all code snippets. And code snippets are basically bits of code that you can dra drag and drop in. So uh, I'm just going to find an if else statement here. So here's an if else statement. And I can just drag that into my view did load. And there you go. I've got an if else statement in my work. If I wanted uh, a dialog method, there's that in here as well. Um, and as you can see, I've got loads of errors, so I'm going to delete that. Um, so that's the code snippet tool, and it can be helpful for putting stuff in your work. Um, also, you can make your own code snippets, but I don't know how to do that yet. So uh, you can work that out. Now I'm going to go into the interface builder by just clicking on the test app view controller.nib. And as you can see, it looks just the same as old interface builder, just within Xcode 4. Now, if, if you haven't got this window open, just make sure you click on it. It'll bring open your interface builder thing. If you click on this small little box here, it will uh, open up all your stuff, so your labels, your buttons. So I'm just going to drag a label in here because we've got our label. Um, I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to select this tab here, and I'm going to 
make it bigger and stuff and I can change its font and that uh, but I'm not going to do that for now because I'm pushed for time and I can select here for the actions um, so if I go down here click on files owner go over here to the action select the action tab and drag label to label and there you go that's connected and uh, I can just command s to save that um, so that's how you use interface builder and uh, one last thing, if I get really angry and it's annoying me Xcode is or it crashes or something like that and I close it by accident, Xcode will automatically save for me. So if I go back here and I open the organizer, you can see it says test app today 1819. It is now 1819. Um, so that's really cool, a cool feature. Uh, it will automatically save for you. Um, so if you have any questions on this, don't forget to leave them in the comments. Um, I will put a link in the description to a PDF file that Apple supplies um, to help people transist from Xcode 3 to Xcode 4. Um, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe and see you in my next video.